Right, Dave Marshall on the line now from Australia, from Sydney. How are you, Dave? I'm all right. They don't remember meat life too fondly in Melbourne, though. Why? Because oh, it was like grand final weekend last week in the, in, in in Melbourne, and mm. um, and it's always one of those spectacles yeah. where one hundred thousand people gather, mm. and there is an attempt to put on pre-show entertainment and a half-time entertainment for the masses, and of course the televised audience at home. Yeah, and so every year it's one of those things that Australians take great pride on either, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down to the pre-show or the, uh, the halftime entertainment. This year, you know, and there's always speculation about who it's going to be, and this year, Robbie Williams had the slot. Right. Um, and there was speculation that he was going to team up with Kylie Minogue, you know, which had everyone talking, but in the end mm. it was only Delta Goodrum, so that was a bit of a letdown for, <laughs> for, 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 for Kylie fans and, and yeah. some people in general, maybe, but Robbie actually did a great job because it's very hard to do a live show, as you know, being a professional performing musician, <laughs> when you've got the fold back, you yep. know, you've got the reverberation around the stadium, um, all of that coming back at you, trying to make sure that you're hitting it on the mark and if you're miming... You do the Milli Vanilli correctly, otherwise, right. you know, yeah. you're doing it live and doing off tune, whatever it may be. I mean, there's so much criticism. This year, of course, the, the host broadcaster, Channel 7, copped it because they didn't even show the girl singing the national anthem. Oh, she really? Did a cracking, cracking job. But didn't even, sh not a single shot during the national anthem, preoccupied with something else. So they caught criticism. But of course, Meatloaf, back to the original story. Mm. 2011, Meatloaf did not captivate the crowd at all. <laughs> it was an utter, yes, sad reflection, which is why he's not remembered fondly in Melbourne. Oh, really? Did, was it community generally. What happened? I mean, was he just not on form? Well, it was just... The past there was concerns that he just wasn't healthy enough, you yeah. know, at the time. Mm. And getting out on stage, he was very proud because, you know... Mm. When he's asked to go on stage, he always goes on stage. And, uh, and you know, he had, he had a fever, he had the shakes, he was coughing up, oh you know, he was a dog, he shouldn't have gone on. No. But he went on. Yeah, yeah. And so the pressure was there. But being the showman that he is, always go on. Mm. But, of course, it was an unforgiving audience. Yeah, of you know, course. 100,000 people live and 2.75 million people around the country, not very happy. Yeah. And so... Racked you know, up. Remembered for all the wrong reasons. Oh dear. Well, that is that is a pity. So there's a lot going on today. My goodness. When you when you mentioned the subjects, I was like, well, Dave, we're going to need like three hours for these. But so I'm not quite sure where to start. But I did, I was very struck by that sad story just which is just breaking. Well, it's, you know, here about the former pro surfer who's who's been punched and died. Dreadful. Yes, it seems to be. You know, Chris Davidson. Um, you know, a pro surfer lived at Southwest Rocks, you know, four hours drive north of Sydney. And, um, you know, 45 years old, been there for, for, for quite some time, sort of semi retirement, I suppose. But, um, but, you know, out for a night, you know, had a few beers with the lads, friends at the, uh, at the, at the, at the local club, and, uh, and a bit of it to do in a car park afterwards. And as is often the case mm. these days, um, with young men, um, certainly it's not the actual punch about and everything else that causes the damage. It's when you hit the ground. Yeah. Um, and this was the case, you know, head hit hard, everything else, and uh, and you have quite a pro quite a bit of a problem there. Um, this was, of course, you know, the, the the issue in Sydney, the sucker punch, the coward punch, um, that became famous in King's Cross and actually led to King's Cross being totally shut down and mm. being a different place mm. um, now to what it was, you know, five, six years ago, um, even. Um, now you can throw a baseball um, or a cricket ball down Darling Hills Road at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and not hit anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deserted. Um, so the whole, the, the, the place has changed dramatically. But the whole sucker punch um, thing, hitting people from behind, the coward punch, just violence where mm. there are hard surfaces around, gutters, roads, things like that, where people hit their heads and, you know, have mm. a very hard chance um, of recovering from. So, yes, this, you know, tragic story for the community, tragic story for, for, for him and his family and certainly the, the gentleman who's been arrested. Um, yeah. But 
he went, he went a bit too far. Um, just unnecessary. It just, it's just sickening because, like, we've had a warning about this this King Hit stuff in New Zealand, particularly in Queenstown and Auckland, because there are a couple of episodes where, yeah, people die. It only takes one hit, and as you say, it might not be the actual force of the punch. It's the, it's the, it's what you how you fall, and and this is this is awful. A fit, you know, forty five year old. I mean, he still had a lot of life to live. I I just think it's it's sickening. It's so so bad. So it is, but yeah. one of the charges as well is assault causing death and intentionally choking a person. So he didn't only whack him, he went on him when he was down as well, apparently. Oh, so, that's you know, awful. So it's sort of not very nice. Is uh, it, is know, it drug again, or booze you know, related, Dave? I mean, has anything come out about the attacker? You know, can you say well, much? It's outside, outside licensed premises. Um, mm. And of course, alcohol seems to be mm. a common factor in, in, in many of these um, issues. Um, and how that alcohol may be mixed with, mixed with other substances mm. along the way. Time will tell. That's um, a shocker. I'm sure that will come out uh, yeah. when it goes to court. Mm-hmm. I think um, they haven't even needs to spend charged. So he did not appear in the Kempsey local court on Monday. Mm. Bail was formally refused. Mm-hmm. Um, Good. And so yeah. it will be some time before he's back in court. Um, to follow up on those charges. Due to appear on November 23. Okay, all right. Now, the Queen, the Queen, the Queen, the Queen. So, you're... you're Are you over it yet? (laughs) You you had your your holiday. Yeah, well, I... You've been living, you've been living the the, the morning dream. I mean, over here we call it morn porn because it's been going on for so long. Yeah, it has, it has. And, you know, should it have gone on so long in down under i don't know i mean we had a holiday yesterday you had yours last thursday but um and, and then yesterday I t- it's funny i turn on the telly i don't know why <laughs> in the daytime and there's this televised service from welly uh about uh you know a continuing uh sort of uh you know paying respects to the queen and lots of people there and my son and his mates were there and they're like oh no i'm over this <laughs> I thought, oh, well, that probably sums it up in a way because there's only so many ways you can say goodbye, you know. Uh, but, yeah, how, how's Australia with it all and, and how did the holiday go? I heard it was a bit of a shambles with bad weather at airports and things. It was, it was, it was one of those perfect storm kind of things. I was, I was travelling for, for, for business to Brisbane and Gold Coast on Tuesday, Wednesday last week, and got up and back and it was kind of, you know, oh, yeah, because you take... It's the luck of the Irish or the will of the gods um, yeah. when you're mm-hmm. travelling at the moment. And a school holidays in Victoria and Queensland, so it was like, fair enough. And I had to fly into one airport and fly out of another, um, which was great. But the next day, they cancelled 40 flights. Heck, <laughs> that's a lot. Sydney airport. Really? Because, they, because they, were, they were forecasting a particular kind of weather and they're like, oh, we'll only be able to operate the cross wind runway won't be able to operate parallel, so there'll be reduced capacity and everything else. So the air traffic controllers are warning the airlines. So the airline cancelled 40 flights. Out of grief. That's a lot. Now, in the end, the weather didn't eventuate the way that they thought it was going to eventuate ah. in Sydney. And so there was no need to cancel 40 flights. So it left holiday makers, families, all of that in constant mayhem. But on the Gold Coast, the day after I left there, they had, of course, a storm. As <laughs> now we're in La Nina, mm. um, the third La Nina in a row, and so the ground is very wet. Mm. Whenever it rains, it pools instantly, and any hint of you know heavy rain, there will be floodwaters. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, northern New South Wales and Gold Coast, people camp between, in a caravan park between Brisbane and the Gold Coast at right. Collinsdale, near Dreamworld and Movie oh, yeah. World and, yeah. and all that, right in that area, just mm. around there, mm-hmm. got hammered by a bit of rain and all of it at like 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, everyone's packing up the campsites and packing up the caravans and they're all trying to leave. So there was gridlock trying to get out of the... Oh, uh, no, park. as the rain it's comes raining down. and the water's flowing through and so it was just diabolical. Uh, um, so that wrecked things for them intently. Um, out in Western New South Wales, it's been quite chronic for a week. The mm. um, we War, um, out in the far northwest, there's still a number of areas that are cut off at the moment um, with floodwaters um, that are rising. And there was one tragic incident uh, where a family who are from Sydney have got a farm out in Western New South Wales. Where right. Got a farm for the holidays. Yeah. Decided to nip over to the zoo. Um, at Dubbo, and then on the way back from the zoo at Dubbo, the waters rose, and uh, they were in the car. Um, 
and uh, all but one managed to get out. So there's a little five-year-old guy um, lost his life in the flood waters um, out past Dubbo, uh, um, terrible. which is quite quite tragic. Um, mm. the, the waters do rise quite quickly, and it's quite unpredictable at the moment. And even with what people may have experienced. In past years with floods aren't mm. going to be the same this year because the water is just, the ground is so wet. Mm. Um, it just instantly pools and so everything is affecting it in every way. Um, so, yes, people who are mourning on the day off for the late, great Queen Elizabeth, mm. um, it wasn't such a particularly fabulous day. There was mm. a ceremony, yeah. of course, like yours in Canberra, mm. um, where everyone got together. But it's one of those things where... It has got to the point, and it did, we spoke about last week, the irritation in the Indigenous community about, okay, we've been quiet, you know, we were asked to be quiet, we've been quiet, but this is getting a bit raw yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, but it is, certainly, uh, people have got caught up with the spectacle of the occasion, you know, whether it be the pageantry of the royal cortege or the procession mm. or the... Mm. You know, the media confection or the, you know, the 170,000 gum salutes going off and bits and flight paths and it's something that you don't experience no. regularly. No. And it is, you know, once in, once in 70 years, you know, for, yeah. for the monarchy of this Commonwealth. Um, so there is that. And so everyone tunes in and because we've become such visual beasts, mm. we need to be entertained constantly, mm. you know, by... TikTok, social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, it becomes very really visual. And so that entertainment thing is not just enough. Mm. This is what they found during lockdowns. That everyone, everyone watched everything on Netflix. And so all the other streaming companies got to go as well because it's like, well, watch everything there. <laughs> so it becomes so visual yeah. that we demand that there needs to be this extra visual. Give it to me. Mm. And so the, I think the Brits did that fantastically very, um, very because well. they, they, don't, they don't only throw on the, the, the visual pageantry and the spectacular nature of their processions and, and uniforms they also throw on the drama and the gossip you know actually with, true with, with the sons and daughters yeah you know, true and the 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 Oh, will he be wearing a uniform or won't he be wearing a uniform? That's oh, right. Dear, right there, but he does in the end. And so <laughs> the drama is confected to to ensure that we're all glued to it. And so Harry and Meghan, maybe they had a secret deal with with the Queen yeah. that Charles wasn't cut in on. You know, now Meghan, I really think you should be right. It's quite nasty, <laughs> and, and, and go off. <laughs> create that hole because that's part of it. Isn't it? Because it's imagine really imagine if they all towed the line, it'd be so boring, but now we've got real characters and real people in this sort of play. You're right. And it's like days of our lives, right. isn't it? It really is. Exactly. Maybe in hindsight, she was a genius yeah. by letting it run. Absolutely. Letting, you know, yeah. let it out there and this will happen here and just watch yep. it and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So to ensure that the, the realm... You know, it's not discounted even further, you know, to hang on, you know, for, for, for the heirs and successes that they might have, you know, a few, a few hundred million pounds left over in, in, in property and, and, and assets or whatever to carry on with. And the goodwill is to create something. It's the reality television, you know, of royalty. Because you looked at them all in the Abbey, right, in Westminster Abbey. And, and I've been there. I've broken traditions there. You know, I've broken the rules. Wonderful place. Um, they're open to that, but, but but they didn't let the untowards show up. So they even created the conflict by the royalty coming from across the seas. So from Denmark, where, of course, you know, you would have thought one of the ordinary Australians who would have had a go uh, to come and visit would have been, of course, their own ordinary Australian from Tasmania who got to be a princess in Denmark, of all places, um, Princess Mary. Um, and mm. she announced, of course, as, as, as a wife to... To, to the Crown Prince in Denmark that she was attending. Um, but, of course, a day later, it was like, no, she's not. She can't because you can only have two royals from each country. Ah, right. Mm. So what... So, so even, the, the, you know, the, keeping everyone in line. And then, and then you had the Spaniards. Aren't they great? You know, the old man shows up, you know, totally disrespectful of what Spain wants and anything else. You know, and I'm there, I was friends with Elizabeth. So he was there, and of course, you know, the son, the new ruler of Spain and everything else, he's there telling the flag. So just the conflict between the families and the heritage could build off in their own countries that aren't even part of the realm. Mm. That's 
genius, you know, <laughs> and she's written all these rules into, you know, Operation London Bridge. This is what's going to happen. This is what I want to happen. Mm -hmm. So she's dictated it. Mm -hmm. She's a genius. Mm -hmm. Oh, Absolute yeah. genius. Yeah. And do you think do you think any Australians took time to sit down, remember her reign, or do anything special like go to church or go to a service? Or do people just go, right, I'm just going to go and have a barbecue and go to the beach, or it was just another holiday? Uh, it was just another holiday. Of course it was. Yeah, just like here. Um, mm -hmm. But even the interesting thing was that even the people who are utterly loyal to her, um, played their cards at the end of the day. So we, of course, had the memorial service at Parliament House in Canberra on Thursday last week on the holiday. And all the previous Prime Ministers are lined up there, you know. It's, you know, the former Prime Ministers Club get together and, you know, there's John Howard and, and they're all lined up. But the one that was absent, conspicuous by his absence, was the very man who gave... Prince Philip an honour <laughs> which is right. in Australia Tony Abbott didn't uh -huh. even show up for the service didn't show up and of all of them he was the most ardent vocal monarchist uh -huh. you know out there in, in front didn't show up for the memorial service what kind of statement was that dreadful so there's a bit of a sort of a bit of a bit of a goss going on about what's what, what, what got all there where's Tony you can't, you can't really worry about that but it's interesting, he showed up yesterday to get on a plane, the Prime Minister's plane, to go to Shinzo Abe's funeral, memorial service in Japan. And uh, which is like, hang on, so John Howard's there and, and, uh, and, and Tony Abbott are getting on, on Aldo's little plane. They wouldn't take the big plane, which you thought with those three blokes on, they would have made the big plane. For it was, it was. Yeah. Can you imagine being on that plane? <laughs> that would be <laughs> Both yep. two down the back. Well, Tony, I remember, and up the front, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, oh no, it's been it's been an interesting two or three weeks, hasn't it? But it's I think everyone's collectively taking a breath from, or certainly in terms of the royal stuff, and just going right, okay, uh, back back to it now. Uh, that's done, you know. She she's gone. And uh, it seems are we? But we're even confused know. on how we're going forward. Well, I don't. Yeah, we are confused. Even, even, you know how you like you and your esteemed media career. You know, you get a sixth sense for thinking when things just aren't right. You know, and when you sit down and you look at your diary in the morning and you look at it, and you go, "I just don't get it. Something's not right." And 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 that's been happening to me for the last week. I've been looking down and I'm thinking, and I'm trying to plan the next couple of weeks because it's still holidays. So we're going to have a farm. Nice, Mike. And uh, in South Australia, which will be lovely. I'll talk to you from there next week. Oh, and, lovely. Um, the, uh, I'm just thinking, something's wrong here. And I'm looking at my Google Calendar, and I'm trying to be resistant. I don't have Lexi, what's her name? Alexa and those things and Siri. I don't do that. I don't talk. I mean, I just yell. Because can you imagine if you had one of those things? Mm. I'd be hurling abuse in my office. Going, <laughs> you can't Siri would be off doing things and booking this and telling people to do this. No, so I don't. I don't. I don't um, like them much. But my, look, my, they're great for my mum because she has no sight. And Alexa is great because she can say, what's the time, Alexa? You know, et cetera, et cetera. She's got a little unit there. But occasionally she's like, shut up, you know. <laughs> it's great. It's a great, great thing to take out your frustrations on. But no, I, I agree with you, Dave. No, it's just the old it diary. Is, but I got freaked out. Mm. It is, but I looked out and I'm looking at it. It's like, but hang on, I kept looking at it this week. Last week, something's wrong. And I was like, hang on. And I looked on it, it's like, it's the King's birthday holiday in Western Australia yesterday. Is it now? And I thought, oh, the King's birthday holiday. However, in Queensland, next week, Monday the 3rd, is still the Queen's birthday. No wonder you're confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Google's confused. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. But it's, I, 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 I had to dig into it and think, oh, there must be a reason for that. Is it, you know, Google being Google or, mm -hmm. you know? Do you trust in conspiracy theories and manipulation mm. and like? No, I think it's the way that it's gazetted um, by the different states. And West Australia is very progressive in what they do, and they immediately would have changed Queensland. Not so. They're not that far. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> <laughs> no. Say, like say no more. Say no more. Queensland.
right? Even, even though things are changing very dramatically. Mm. My goodness, that Wonderful. is that is rather odd, isn't it? Hey, you were mentioning, Dave, that uh, it's been it's been uh, you know we'd talked about meatloaf before, but um, but it's been a year of of tears, really, for, like the worst year for celebrity deaths for the for Australia anyway since twenty sixteen. Well, it is, and because that's why we've been looking at it this year. Is like, of course, we've had Shane Warne. That was just you know. There should have been a there should have been a national holiday for that. You got to think. Mm. Shane Warne did it for everybody, and so the loss of warning. Mm. Just day, day before yesterday, it was John Hamlin who died, who was on a TV show here called Play School. Oh yeah, um, which is you know has been around for almost as Forever. long as Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, um, but he was one of the longest running cast members of that, and he passed away. And so all of these people who've been with us for such a long time in so many ways. You know, Judith Durham, of course, you know, mm-hmm. from, from The Seekers and Archie Roach, who we've spoken about before, the great Indigenous musician here. Oh, yeah. Um, and and, and Uncle Olivia. Jack Charles, the, the Indigenous actor. Mm. And Olivia, of course. But, of course, this year as well, you know, you had Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah. Ishi Miyake. True. You know, S- Sidney Poitier. Mm. Um, oh, so you're not, not just Jack. thinking, you're thinking globally. It's it's one of the globally, most. Globally, mm. globally. Well, here as well. I mean, we've had Andrew Simons, the cricketer. That was mm. tragic. Oh yeah, you know, when, uh, when he had his car crash and everything else in North Queensland. Mm. Um, and and so many people here. But it is it's all in the world, I think. Mm. Um, and it's not that people stop passing away, but we do have these bursts. And it's like, oh, tragedy, tragedy, mm. tragedy. I mean, David Bowie died in 2016. That was the standout, wasn't it? Uh, back mm. then, mm. But it was just so you know, sad that that'd be the case. Mm. Um, but 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 yes, it is. And when and because grief is such a personal thing, mm. and we identify with with people from our childhood, our early lives, the influences in our lives, and so when so mo- so many of them pass away mm. in such short period of time, there's no wonder we all feel collectively sad. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Hey, do you know, I, I sort of... It doesn't matter that you didn't like Queenie or not. It was just she was there. Yeah, yeah. She was uh, she was a stable force in the world. Hey, you know Olivia's um, state funeral? That's I seem to completely miss that. How did I do that? Because they did do a state funeral, didn't they? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, because I never saw... I, you know, I remember her dying and, and, you know, she was a hero of mine. So I was like, right, I really want to watch the send-off. And... Um, I don't remember ever seeing it. It just just occurred to me. I was like, I wonder, I wonder what that was like. Oh, no. it, you know, I thought Travolta would be there. You know. Anyway, oh, no. it was a well, while I, ago. I don't remember it either. So look, let's mm. let's explore that. That's mm. one of those mm. things that, and I think it got over, overtaken by everyone else. Mm. Um, but. Uh, we live in a fast-paced world, you're right. So, travel, Dave, it still seems to be a bit messy, like in terms of what... what, what you, you said that Jetstar's uh, dropping, leaving people stranded in all parts of the globe. What's going on? Yeah, Jetstar still uh, this week. It's, I think they pick a city or a country of the week. That, you know, they've, they've irritated enough, I don't know. But You're but so this, naughty. This You're Hon- so Hon- naughty. Hon- Honolulu. You can imagine them with a dartboard and a map. And a global map, you know, and it's like they're only restricted to the countries they operate in, so people shoot. I'm going for Bali. I'm going for Honolulu this week. Had people with stranded because of their continuing and ongoing international uh, failures of, of um, leaning up the demand. Um, this is one of the greatest um, problems that, that they have with it because we've become so entrenched with them being reasonably uh, efficient um, and delivering, you know, a reasonably high performance so that when they fail and when they do cancel flights, it is the luck of the draw. Um, but because there's been so many cancelled flights lately, it's costing people thousands and because there's no alternative routes. So the, the discount air model um, for airlines, which worked, has worked around the world, you know, for so long, works okay if you've got alternatives. So if that flight's cancelled, you can go over here and buy a flight for twice as much mm. and travel, but it's still only going to be twice as much of a low amount. Whereas now, because the markets are so stretched and stressed and staff are so, they're not able to fulfil. And so people who are in Honolulu on a Jetstar flight, Jetstar goes, sorry, you cancelled terms and conditions of the 
of a, of a ticket unless you bought insurance or a flight guarantee or one of their other products, mm. um, bad luck. You're on your own, mm. which is the terms and conditions of the sale of the ticket. The problem is that that's okay generally because people can pick up another flight on another airline. But there's no other flights on no other airlines because it's so tight. Well, this so is the problem. Mm. A, so it, 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 it's created this concerning. Yeah, and so, so many people flying back from or trying to get to the football, of course, um, with all the flights cancelled last Thursday. Right. Um, to get to Victoria for the AFL Grand Final mm. because the Sydney Swans were playing there and so many of the flights were to Melbourne. So people were driving and just going, bugger it. Which is okay if you can drive and it only takes nine hours. <laughs> um, only so nine hours. <laughs> it's a long trip in, a, in, all, in New Zealand, I tell you. <laughs> well, but it is, it's different as opposed to flying across the ditch to you guys. You can't drive. You can only fly. Yeah, so true. there's so many limited options. So it creates a problem um, and a dynamic in the market that, um, that, that people aren't, who aren't risk-averse when they travel, and you have to be so risk-averse mm. um, with what you do. It's like tomorrow we're flying Rex to Melbourne and then Rex to Mount Gambia. Um, so, and they have their own people packing the plane and unloading the plane and shifting the bags from this plane to this plane just over here. So it's not <laughs> creating any complications. Right. Um, and so that, that makes it much easier as opposed to flying. If you Google Rex Airlines, it says Rex remains Australia's most reliable airline with official figures confirming it had the best on-time performance and lowest cancellation rate. Yeah. Interesting. There you go. Right. But that's part. Of, but but it's, it's interesting because at the moment there's nothing that Qantas can do that actually meets anyone's expectations of good. Because mm. last week there was this huge outfall mm. because they cancelled vegetarian meals. Now, of course, these days when you have so many activist influencers who are vegans, that would have been one of the most outrageous things you could have done. <laughs> it was a Full service airline. Yes. You imagine those big lips pouting at you? What do you mean with my vegan meal? <laughs> yeah. Something that, that they just didn't they didn't forecast or perceive. And it was one of the things that caught us cut out um, prior to well, when COVID happened, they cut out meal options and everything else. And so when they've been coming back, they're trying to introduce things to meet expectations, but of course everyone's paying a fortune to fly Qantas and expect high levels of service. Mm. And so it used to be, you know, beef or chicken, beef or chicken, you know, and then it became, you know, beef, chicken or veg, beef, chicken or veg or whatever. And, sure. uh, and now with no veg and just one option, there was a lot of handbags throwing and so Qantas, <laughs> Qantas did, did relent. And not only did they, they said, okay, we'll bring back the veg, we've listened and we've heard you. Mm. They've decided that how to reward them is to make happy hour go a bit longer on the plane. So they're introducing alcohol for free on many quarter flights an hour earlier than what they used to. Oh, really? And well, that's uh, a good. That's got to be a good thing, surely. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to help with all the stress of do, delays and, well, and lost bags and etc. Because because there's, there was another there was another great yarn about uh, about about a woman who who lost her bags for three months. And Qantas finally delivered the lost bag. And by, she'd come out here for a wedding and she was back in Wales. Um, and, uh, and they're like, we found your bag. And she's like, no, I'm in Cardiff. And, and the bag found her in 24 hours. Um, but you lose a bag for three months and mm -hmm. she was offered $120 in compensation. So it's not a really, it's still difficult, I think, for everybody around the world with what's going on. And so, yeah, mm. very, very difficult. But of course, Underneath all of this, and you know the, the the outrage of airlines and problems that people are having with levels of service, um, Qantas the big target has been on the back of Alan Joyce, the chief executive of Qantas, who makes you know his base salary is almost three million dollars a year, um, yeah. and makes squillions of dollars of bonuses if he meets the expectations. And so he's been looking after shareholders. So he's been rewarded very well um, by the board because he looks after the shareholders. Passengers not so happy um, with what's going on. Um, and so that's created an interesting um, scenario. And people expected him at some stage to move on and be replaced by bevy of exceptional talent, apparently, in Qantas. Um, guy who's running Jetstar, Gareth Evans, was touted to be the next CEO of Qantas. Mm. Um, but when Alan Joyce recently said, you know, 
no, I'm going to hang around for a few more years because you need me mm. and everyone loves me. Um, Gareth Evans pulled the pin and he said, that's it, I'm out of here. And he'd been there for so many years. Mm. So he was out. <coughs> and Qantas had to find um, someone to replace him as chief executive officer of Jetstar. Now, it's very interesting, the people that they've replaced. And I think this gives you some idea, regardless of the recruitment process or how they've gone through it, but how it could be perceived by the passenger. Because the chief executive of Jetstar has been replaced by a woman who is the group chief customer office at Qantas since 2019. So she's looking after the customer at Qantas for the last three years. So they've taken this woman to be now the head of Jetstar. So which, when you look at it, the way what Qantas has become the last few years is maybe what Jetstar will become. <laughs> hey, uh, it's a very, it's a very, uh, so she, she looks after the customer, which for Jetstar, well, she's used to, it's a different thing, but she's been replaced as chief customer officer by a gentleman who was in charge of revenue management, alliances, and oversaw commercial strategy. So they've appointed him to be the chief customer and service officer of Qantas and his after revenue. It's quite interesting how they try and put square pegs in round holes. Isn't it? At Qantas. Oh, yeah. And that's part of their, I don't know, it's fascinating to look at. It's a shame because but, I always held it up to be this, you know, really great airline. And I, I always thought, when, when you know, when I flew it internally in Australia, it was really cool and, you know, it had a great reputation. But things seem to have, <laughs> things seem to have changed somewhat in recent years. It's a... Well, no, it's a different, it's a diff very different airline to what it was ten years ago, to what it was twenty years ago, um, and and even when they started to employ staff offshore, um, in different ports in London, in Singapore, um, in cheaper ports, and then they did that. That was their model for Jetstar uh, to be able to base crews offshore. They certainly did it, I think, in your market um, for for an Australian airline operating in your market by employing people in New Zealand who are flying back to Australia, principally backwards and forwards. So most of the, I think. Still to this day, the airlines flying in and out of Australia are based in New Zealand because it's cheaper. Mm, mm. Labor arrangements, industrial relations. Industrial Interesting. Yeah. Funny, funny old times in the travel world and the airline world, isn't it? Uh, you know? isn't it? But that's but that's why you want to go to places like Toowoomba. <laughs> yes. Toowoomba on the range. No, see, Toowoomba is fascinating. This little private airport was built outside of Toowoomba mm. by the Wagner family. And, and it's one of those sort of field of dreams things, you know, build a baseball stadium, they will come. Um, same build an airport, they will come. And so they built this airport out of Toowoomba, and, which has got a three kilometre runway. And um, everyone's like, yeah, great. And, uh, but Cathay Pacific started to use it and they, started, they got them in there to fly cargo in and out and live um, freight um, to Asia and, uh, and looped around. And they've got a few, uh, I think they've got a, Jet Star flight in and out of there from Newcastle or something. And Bonza Airlines are going to be flying in and out of there to many places out of Toowoomba. Yes, as but, revealed in this chat weeks ago, we, we, yes, we course, broke it first. Course. Yes, Bonza However, Airlines. But, but, but the Wagners also um, used the site there um, to build a quarantine facility uh, for the Queensland government. Um, during the latter days of COVID, when it was still everyone was still thinking we're going to need quarantine facilities, so they built a two hundred and forty-five million dollar quarantine facility on the edges of the airport on their land. They're also building a number of other different industrial things around them. Very clever people, mm. but they have scored Virgin Orbit, who are, who commercially launch satellites mm. and rockets into space from seven twenty-seven aircraft will be based at Toowoomba Well Camp Airport. Uh-huh. Very exciting. It is you won't interesting. You not be able to fly, but, but, no. but satellites and <laughs> rockets and things will be flung from the Toowoomba range west of Brisbane. Launcher ones, mobile ground support equipment and other infrastructure should be built there. Unreal. So, yes, with the next 16 to 18 months, you're going to see satellites flying out of Toowoomba. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's, that would be the equivalent of doing that from, say, Taris or Twizel in New Zealand, perhaps. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But it's very exciting. And Maybe so, there's it's hope. It's quite bizarre because 
there is there's a, there's there's another um, outback um, town in Queensland, Clermont, um, in far northwestern Queensland, mm. and this little place has got the only high highly sophisticated high tech drone testing facility in the country. And in the middle of nowhere, you've got this facility. So they've been, Boeing have been testing this loyal wingman drone to fly and pairing with the F-35 flight fighters. Mm. Um, so it operates in tandem, two or three of these things with each fighter. And so they've been testing the timing out there. And lots of other drone companies are out there testing mm. automated um, cars and aircraft and things like that to get certified. So um, it's quite bizarre the little things that appear in the middle of nowhere because they need places for things to crash. <laughs> when you put it that way, it sounds quite blunt, but I guess I guess that's true, Dave. Hey, have you heard? I, I, I think we might take a short musical break before we finish this this um this whole segment. But have you heard of a band called the Chats? I think they're from Queensland. No, right? Are they? Yeah, I they've got a really funny song. They're kind of uh, a bit. They call themselves Shed Rock, like kind of a bit punk almost. And they've got this track called Smoko. And I thought I think you'd really like this. So I thought maybe I'll just play it to keep keep the listeners um, who like hearing a bit of music as well. I thought we'd chuck this in today, and then I'll come back to you and we'll um, continue our punk chat. Rock. Punk, rock. punk rock, kind of punk. So check this out, Dave, and I'll be right back with you. This is the chats with Smoko. <laughs> there they go. Uh, there was the chats, a three-piece. Dave, what would you think of that? Australia's most bogan band. <laughs> yeah. I think that's such a funny it's song. True. They have been. They are rated Australia's most bogan band. They've paid for Dave Grohl. They what? They what for Dave Grohl? They played for him. Did they? He's watched them. He's ah. appreciated. Yes. He likes They're them. legends. Different... They're from the Sunshine Coast. Um, oh, they're from the but, Sunshine uh, Coast. Ah, yes. oh, very good. But I like them. You know, when, when they come up with the, the... They say the band takes its name from the phrase, that's chat, which is apparently slang to describe something gross or ah, disgusting. Okay. So if I, saw, um, if, if I saw something in the street like a dead possum, I'd go, oh, that's chat. Maybe on the Sunshine Coast, but I haven't heard it before because there's all these weird things like... In Melbourne, if something outstanding, it's grouse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we used but it's not that. used anywhere else in Australia. It's uniquely Melbourne. Well, I so remember ch- using the that. Chat might be. Yeah. Well, you're, you, you're, you're so cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> I'm from a small town, yeah. small town on the east coast of New Zealand, but uh, I try. Yeah, no, but you're so you're very you're very discreet. I appreciate it. you haven't spoken about the rugby this week because I know that my instruction for the Australia for the Wallabies has been move on. <laughs> no, I, I haven't. Think they took that a bit too literally. But there's still time, Dave. There's still time. We have five minutes to talk about it if you really want to. But that was that was a weird game. I mean, I don't really get rugby that much, and I don't get a lot of pleasure out of watching it either. And I was looking at that game, and I was going, is this really kind of stop-start boring? Where's all the good stuff, and why haven't Australia kind of um, turned this into a match? I don't know. What happened? What's the feeling it's over there? Confused. Lost. Lost. Look, when the, the pre... The, the, horrified, mortified with the uh, with the actions of the French referee, and so there's just no confidence. Why well, carry on? Third game in the series, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to put up a fight and be valiant and go out with seven injuries and you're off on a European tour? No! You're going to lay down. <laughs> oh, so you think it was all planned? It was the right... Okay, no, guys. Well, it's subliminal. Isn't it like those Bruce Lipton stuff or, you know, yep. uh, Oprah Winfrey manifesting things, the secret? They manifested incorrectly, didn't they? <laughs> yes, they did. Well, you know, they chucked it like a, a, like a good cricket match that's been fixed. Mm, maybe. Well, yeah, yeah. I oh, know, but at least they haven't got to contend with magpies. Why? What's going on with magpies? It's a magpie. Well, it's, of course, it's magpie season here at the moment. Oh, right. And, uh, and, and, and you had this, sort of this, this world cycling race mm. that, that for the first time ever has been in Wollongong. And it's rare that it comes to Australia because it's normally in Europe. Mm. And so you've had uh, all of these world-class cycling facts. They had to close the school in Wollongong uh-huh. um, for this cycling event because many of the, many of the roads the cycling event was on people would have to cross the road to go to school and they couldn't have that. So they closed the school <laughs> oh, for the goodness day sakes. so they could guarantee the integrity of the cycling event, which is great because all these world-class cyclists coming out and Australian cyclists 
got to participate at that standard at home. Now, the event was mired in a number of different sort of, there was a, ended in outrageous controversy um, because the, the guy who was expected to win the event was a Dutch guy, mm-hmm. Matthew van der Poel. Right. And, uh, but, but he had this incident the other night, the night before the race. He went to bed early and, of course, he had a bunch of teenage girls running up and down the corridor of the hotel room, uh-huh. five-star hotel, little main unknown, um, bashing on his door. And he sort of, he was like, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then he ended up losing his rag and went up and went outside and wasn't very polite and uh, ended up being charged with assault and uh, convicted for like $1,500 and might be able to come back to Australia for three years. Really? Um, because he pushed one of these 13 year old girls against the wall, one fell to the ground, uh-huh. and the other got a minor graze on her elbow. Right. Um, so let that be a lesson to you if you're going to be harassed by teenage girls who are banging on your door just don't answer call security. Exactly. Let someone else deal with it. Much better. But the most horrendous thing that happened at this event was none of these global riders have ever, ever experienced the delights of being swooped on at high speed <laughs> by, by a magpie. magpie. <laughs> hey, Dave, it's funny you should mention this because I did the rail trail years ago, uh, which, is a, which is a beautiful trail out of Clyde um, in central Otago. And I got separated from the group I was with and, uh, and I got the fright of my life because this magpie did exactly that to me and swooped down on my helmet and was like pecking and they're vicious vicious beggars, aren't they? So I, I, told, I relate to things. it. It's, it's the, 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 the air pressure of the wings because it sucks the air out of the immediate air and it flings it back at you. So you've got this air pressure vortex behind you. So instantly, you know something's going on. The hairs on the back of your neck rise and you're thinking something's going on here and so you're instantly in fight or flight and then you're being hammered by this thing out of the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And so it is. It's a classic. There's, you know, news programs around the country are filled with funny minutes of people being chased by magpies. You know, <laughs> it's and, funny. And it's course, only uh, funny when it's not you, though, Dave. That's how I have to say. But it's funny because all of the things that people put on their, you know, on their cycle helmets, you know, to to scare them away. And there are these people who've got ingenious devices and so they look quite comedic, or that they're they're wearing, you know, silver hats, you know, the alfoil hats or things like that mm. to keep these things away. Keep the birds um, away. But it was the most extraordinary thing watching these world-class cyclists getting hammered by these magpies <laughs> and working out what to do and how to get how to cope. And what it is. Da- so that's it's crazy. Unusual. It is. Hey, David, it's been really great. We have to go actually because news is approaching, but uh, it's been a, it's been a good chat today. And I'll catch you Monday next week, hey? From the farm, we'll be down shearing sheep. Beauty bonds of grass. I'll see you then.